Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago live stream. My name is Liam, I'm one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers like you. And today we've got another exciting uh, addition to our lineup of presets and this is part of our Quest subscription series and that is Quest 23 Odeon. Uh, Odeon is a cinematic inspired preset collection that features five subtly cinematic preset bases uh, along with three color grade presets which can be mixed and matched with those bases. We have one creative profile and a bunch of tools to really help push that cinematic look including anamorphic flare, uh, some black bars and various other very exciting things. So we're going to get into that shortly. We're going to take a look at those presets, uh, explain what you get as part of this collection. But yeah, this is the next release as part of our Quest subscription series. For those that don't know, Quest is a preset subscription. You can subscribe for $8 per month and that gets you access to download a new preset collection each and every month. So we release a new set on the first of each month. And if you are a member, you can download that current month's preset collection for free as part of your membership. So this set will be coming out on the 1st of February, so not too long away. And that, like I said, is Quest 23 Odeon. Uh, as well as being able to download that current month's uh, set, you'll also get access to download previously released sets from the archive store. You can purchase those separately. Uh, you get discounts off our regular presets. And we like to throw in uh, some additional tools and various other bonus things along the way as well. So lots of good stuff involved in Quest. If you don't know too much about that, go and check it out on Archipelago Quest dot com to see about that subscription and get signed up today uh, and if you subscribe subscribe now you can download this current month set and then on the 1st of february you'll get your hands on quest 23 odeon so we're going to dive in and take a look at these presets i've got 10 amazing photos that i'm going to be editing today i'll be answering any questions you have about the presets so if you are in the chat live do make sure to ask if you have any questions i can see there's lots of people on here Thank you very much for joining. Lots of different places as well. I can see Spain, we've got Rome, uh, we've got, let's have a look, Romania, Jerusalem, Nashville in the US, incredible stuff. Thank you very much for tuning in. So like I said, I've got 10 amazing images that I'll be editing with today, which are these 10 images that you see on the screen here. So what I like to do with uh, these streams, obviously showcase these presets, kind of show you how they work on a variety of images, answer any questions you have, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but what I like to do is find out which image you'd like to see edited as we go through this stream. Um, so all you need to do is let me know the number in the top left of the thumbnail there to uh, uh, let me know which image you want to see edited next. And we'll go through all 10 so you can see a nice variety of edits with uh, the Odeon presets. And if you are jumping in the chat and interacting as we go through this, you're gonna be in with a chance of winning a pre-release copy uh, of Quest 23 Odeon. So we'll be selecting some people from the chat at the end of the stream to win pre-release copies of Quest 23 Odeon. Uh, so do stick around till the end. Make sure you keep interacting in the chat. Throw any questions in there. Let me know what you think to the edits and the images. Uh, and you could be in with a chance of winning a free preset collection, which is very exciting. So we'll get underway in a moment. Uh, what I'm going to do is just show you this first image here. So when we go into the actual editing, you're going to see at the top left of the screen, you've got the photographer's name and uh, there's also the Instagram handle if they've included that with the file and then the EXIF data just underneath that. So if you want to know uh, what camera it was shot on, what, what kind of uh, lens, all that kind of good stuff, you're going to see that in the top left of each image as we go through. So I can see some people requesting uh, images to be edited. So I'm going to start with this one. I'll kind of walk through the presets, uh, kind of give, uh, I'll, I'll obviously edit this image, show all the tools, that kind of stuff. And then I'll dive in and start editing the next ones. So I can see image number two and nine were selected after that. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and kind of take a look at the set to begin with. And then we'll go through these in the order that you want to see. So like I said, Quest 23 is all about that cinematic aesthetic. Uh, it's inspired by that amazing tonality, that color grading that you see in cinema. Uh, and we've got some amazing tools to help really push that look in the edit as well. So you can go from something that's very subtle and very gentle kind of cinematic vibe through to something that's sort of very, very cinematic, has really heavy uh, toning uh, and also tools that really emphasize that look. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual base presets. So like I said, there's three base presets, there's three color grade presets. Uh, we've also got how many tools? One, two, three, four tools, five tools, and the creative profiles. There's quite a lot going on with this set. Um, so we've got this gorgeous here uh, image here by Miguel. 
Um, such a nice photo. We've got this beautiful backlit scene with the mountains. The, the sun's just peeking over the corner of the mountain here behind the subject. Lovely backlit image. Um, I love the uh, pose of the subject there as well. Absolutely gorgeous photo. So what I'm going to do to begin with, let's take a look. I might do some lens correction. Let's have a little look. Yep, that's just going to give us a little bit more of a neutral uh, flat image to begin with. And I think the white balance is looking good and the exposure is looking okay as well. With a backlit image like this, um, sometimes it's difficult to kind of get the exposure right before you start applying the preset. So uh, with an image like this, I'll often just sort of dive in and take a look at the presets and then from there I can tweak. So let's take a look at these, AQ23-1. Now you see it's going to take a second to apply and that's because there is an AI mask built in. Uh, to these presets so that just uh, selects the background of the image and just dials the uh, the colors back in the background So this is AQ 23 one. That's a one-click edit So you can see we have a little bit of a cinematic look, but it's quite subtle. It's quite gentle It works very well across a broad range of images um, So instead of going for something incredibly intense uh, We've gone for something a little bit more subtle to begin with and then when you combine it with the color grades, you can go for something uh, a little bit more stylized. So AQ23-1, that's one click. AQ23-2, this one shifts to being a little bit more cool toned. Uh, you can see that the contrast is a little bit different between one and two as well. Uh, you're gonna see more of the color shifts as we go through the images and see some uh, photos that have a little bit more color in. It's quite a neutral image this, uh, but you'll see some of the shifts in color between those two. And then we have AQ23-3, which is quite a warm preset. It's got a little bit more of an injection of warmth. Again, the contrast is a little bit different. The highlights are a little bit more um, uh, kind of pulled back on this particular set. And I think for this, uh, this particular preset is gonna work the best. So AQ23-3, I'll go ahead and apply that and then I can talk you through the rest of the presets in this. So that's a one click. Now, one thing that I would encourage you with this set is uh, obviously we have the preset amount slider at the top left. And typically, uh, I mean, you can use this with any of the, the presets that support it, uh, but typically you can, uh, you, you'll find that the tools work best with the amount slider and some of the presets, you might tweak it a little bit left and right. Uh, but I would say with, with this particular set, uh, for certain images, if you go ahead and increase or decrease it, it's going to look really good. So definitely check that out, have a play with that and see what you think. Don't go too wild, um, just kind of subtle tweaks to that when you apply the base preset, but definitely take a look. When I've done certain images that are sort of like more detail shots, things like that, I've actually found that cranking the preset up a little bit higher, maybe increasing it by about 20 20 has worked really well and just added a little bit more of a punchy look to the edit. But for this, I'm happy with the default. So again, this is the unedited and this is with AQ23-3. So we have the creative profile that's called Odium and it's set to 100 as default. And this is just uh, setting the dynamic range of the image. So it's a nice balanced amount of dynamic range here. And you can see as we drag it to the left, it's gonna give you a more punchy contrasty look. It's gonna kind of push the highlights uh, up, bring the shadows and the blacks down a little bit and give you a punchier look. And if I drag it to the right, you can see it's gonna soften the image and give more dynamic range, lift those shadows, bring down the highlights. So lovely amount of control with this. I think because this is back Clip, you will often find that you need to add a little bit more uh, contrast and punch to the image. So for this, I'm going to bring the profile down a little bit, maybe around about there. So I've set that to 29. And then let's take a look at some of the other presets that are included. So like I said, there are these color grade presets. Now, uh, these are designed to be combined with the base presets. Uh, so we've got color grade one, two, and three. Uh, so we take a look at color grade one. And you can see what that does to affect the image. Um, you can see that the highlights become a little bit more uh, green, a little bit more teal, and the shadows are pushed into that sort of warm orange toning. Then we have color grade two. This one's a little bit more cool tone. So you can see this is without and this is with. Now these are relatively subtle when you first apply them. It depends on the image. Some images it'll be a little bit more prominent, but they're generally quite subtle when you apply them. But this is where that amount slider comes in. So you can crank that up or bring it back uh, to suit your taste. And then we have color grade three, which is a richly warm uh, color grade. So you get that kind of uh, very monochromatic look, um, warmth throughout both the highlights and shadows. Uh, so that's without and that's with. So for this, because we've got that nice backlight, uh, I've gone for the warm preset, which is AQ23 
uh, three, and I'm also gonna go for color grade three, which is gonna give us that nice rich warmth. So I'm gonna apply that. And then of course, we've got the amount slider. So it's set to 100 as default, and we can either back that off for something more subtle, or we can crank it up for a more uh, intense look. So I'm gonna go quite high with this. I like the, uh, the kind of glow of the light from behind the subject there. So again, this is before and this is after, and that's with AQ23.3 and color grade three. And I've just backed the profile off Odeon to bring that down. So I think I would probably just bring the exposure down just a tiny touch. I think somewhere around there is looking good, just so we've got some nice uh, contrast on the subject. And then let's take a look at the rest of the tools. So first off, we have Anamorphic Flare. Now this one I absolutely love. Uh, Anamorphic Flare adds this amazing flare to the image. And because this is a mask, uh, you can move this around, you can change the intensity, all that kind of good stuff. So let's go ahead and use that on this image. I'm gonna quickly take a look at the chat so I can see it's popping off on here, and then I'll carry on. Uh, serious magic right here. Thank you, Sean. So beautiful, so Sarah. Can you explain what is an AI mask for this relative newbie to editing photos in Lightroom? Great question, Alexandra, thank you so much. So AI stands for artificial intelligence, uh, and essentially it's uh, the program, so in this case Lightroom, making a decision based on the data that's given to it. Uh, so in this case, it's an image, it's looking at the image and it's making decisions uh, about that image. So what you're gonna find is it's gonna select things, you can select things like the subject of your photo or the background of your photo or the sky and it's gonna figure out where they are, where those elements are for you without you needing to go in and brush in separate parts of the image. So the AI is figuring out where the subject is, where the sky is, where the background is uh, and allowing you to select that super quickly and then make adjustments. So you can use that by going into the masking panel at the top here. And if I go ahead and say create new mask, you can see it says select subject, select sky, select background, select people. And then you can go ahead and select objects manually. You can brush and do all the other things that you used to be able to do. But these ones at the top are using AI, artificial intelligence, to figure out where they are in your scene. So no longer do you have to go in and manually brush areas of your image and then make adjustments. You can simply say, select my subject or select the background and then make adjustments just to that area. So it speeds up the workflow incredibly. It's a great use of AI. I've lo I love the way that Adobe have implemented this because it means that um, it's speeding up what you want to do, but it's not taking over your job. Uh, you can go ahead and make the edits that you want to make, but you're not having to do that laborious task of manually brushing in the, the edits to certain areas of the image. So I absolutely adore it. AI has been incredible. It was introduced with a, uh, a couple of versions ago uh, last year, and it's just been amazing. And obviously we've gone ahead and used that um, to to kind of enhance the presets that we create. So now we can create presets that automatically do things like select the subject and apply effect just to the subject. Uh, we've actually done a free preset collection, which is called the AI Toolset. And this is free to newsletter subscribers. So if you sub subscribe to the Archipelago Presets newsletter, you can get this AI Toolset for free. Uh, and this uses all of those features. Uh, and you can see we've got things that select the subject, uh, select the background, select the sky, all those kinds of good good uh, things. And you can then go ahead and adjust certain elements of it. So you can, you can download that for free. All you need to do is subscribe to the Archipelago Presets newsletter. So that's archipelagopresets.com uh, forward slash uh, newsletter hyphen sign up. The link is in the chat there. Um, if you want to go ahead and take a look at that, uh, subscribe, confirm your subscription, you'll get a link to download the AI tool set and you can start playing around with all those amazing AI features. Uh, so what I'll do before I show you the other tools in uh, Quest 23, I'll just quickly show you the type of thing that you can do because actually this image would benefit from using one of the tools and that would be Sky Saver. So if I go ahead and hover over Sky Saver, you can see it's just gonna select the sky and it's gonna bring the exposure of the sky down uh, and that's gonna save the, the sky in terms of bringing back some detail. So I'm gonna apply that and now I can set exactly how much of that I want. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. I'm not gonna go too wild. I think somewhere around there looks good. Um, but you can see it's instantly masked the sky and, and then gone ahead and applied the, the edits that we created as part of that preset. So again, that's free Archipelago AI tool set uh, just by subscribing to the Archipelago presets newsletter and that takes advantage of those AI features. All right, so back to the set. Uh, let me take a quick look at the chat before we continue. All right, so here we go. Anamorphic flare, let me show you this. So you can see it applies as soon as I hover over it. 
on the image here. Uh, but once I've applied the preset, I can jump up into the mask panel and you can see we now have the anamorphic flare. That's where it is there. Look, if I give that one click, uh, that's gonna select the flare and now I can select this and move it around. Now it's important that you only click this once. What you don't wanna do is click that and then move it because you're actually gonna separate out there's two separate masks as part of it. You're gonna separate those out and move them individually. Uh, so if you just select the anamorphic layer, uh, flare top layer, and then you can go ahead and just drag this around to place it wherever you want. So for this image, I'm gonna place it, you know, the lights popping through just behind the subject, just over the edge of the mountain. I'm gonna place this there because that's where the strong light would be. And now we get that effect of anamorphic flare where it gives that nice sort of stretched out flare that runs across the image. Uh, and if, if I place this, yeah, probably around about there, I think that was good. And you can go in and dial this. So again, if you go into the actual layers, you can see that it's separated into two masks. You've got sort of the orb of light in the middle here. So if you wanted to resize that, you can. So if I went for something like that, and then you've got the actual flare, which goes across um, horizontally, and you can either stretch that out for a really pronounced effect or shrink it down or resize it however you like. Um, once you're happy with it, you can then go ahead and just adjust the amount uh, of that effect. So you've got the amount slider here in the mass panel and you can just increase or decrease that. So I'm gonna leave it set to the default amount, I think of 100. Uh, let's have a look, I'm gonna, no, maybe bring it down a tiny little bit. So set it to 86. And now we've got that beautiful anamorphic look. So again, this is before and this is after. Um, it really gives that gorgeous cinematic vibe uh, with the flare running across the middle of the image there. All right, and then the next tools we have is background texture minus. So this one masks out the background and masks the subject uh, and it applies a little bit of an effect to both. So what it actually does is it reduces the texture of the background, um, therefore softening it, uh, and it slightly increases the texture of the subject. Um, so if I go ahead and select this, uh, again, we've got the mount slide at the top left. If I drag this to the left, this is it without. Drag it to the right, this is it with. So you can see, see it does affect the subject, uh, but it's separately doing something to the background. And that's just, if I crank it up to 200, and let's go ahead and zoom in. And what you'll see, if I go into the mask panel and turn that off, this is without, and this is with. And what it's essentially doing is giving us that soft background. It's making it a little bit more blurred, less clarity in the background, less texture, and bringing a little bit more in the subject. Uh, and that gives us a nice amount of separation. So you get that sort of sense of a little bit more depth in the image. Uh, and then we also have background texture plus. So these two masks replace each other. Uh, so you choose one or the other. So you either have minus or plus. And what plus does is it increases the texture of the background. It still also increases the texture in the subject just a little bit, uh, but it's mainly increasing the texture in the background. And this is great if you've got a shot where there's lots of interesting detail or texture in the background and you want to really show that off. You can again apply this preset. This is it set to zero. This is it set to 200, so a really pronounced effect. Uh, and you'll find that certain images will really, really benefit from this. Now, this particular shot, I don't necessarily need to pull out all the detail in the mountains and the clouds, so I would opt to go for texture minus. And I would probably just crank that up a little bit to give us that nice glowy, soft look with the backlight. Uh, but yeah, whatever your preference is, you've got both of those two tools. And you, you definitely find that um, certain images, you'll see when we edit later, really benefit from that background texture uh, plus, really bringing out details in things like the sky and, and, and textures in walls and that kind of thing. And then we have cinematic haze. So this one applies selectively to the highlights in the background of your image. So again, it doesn't affect the subject, only affects the background, and it's specifically affecting the highlights. So you can see it's a relatively subtle effect on this image, but you can see wherever you've got a highlight, it's gonna slightly uh, bloom that highlight and apply this little bit of a cinematic glow to the image. Again, set to 100 as default. This is it all the way down to zero. This is it at 200. So you can see how it just pushes out those highlights, gives that softening glow, a little bit like a diffusion filter, that kind of idea. Again, quite a popular look uh, in cinema. So I'm gonna go for this set to about 160. And now I've got that lovely glowy vibe in the, in the sky, 
in the light that's popping through there as well. And then the last one we have is black bars. So this really, really pushes that uh, cinematic look by putting a black bar at the top and the bottom of your image. Uh, and you can apply this to any images, but realistically it's designed for horizontal photos rather than vertical orientation photos. Um, so it looks best on horizontal and it also looks best when you use a cinematic crop. And that would be something like uh, 16 by 9 so that's the kind of typical cinematic widescreen look so if I set 16 by 9 I'll bring the uh, the crop down to around about there and then let's go ahead and apply the black bars and you can see it's going to add those to the top and bottom of the frame and really give it, it essentially looks like um, kind of a screen grab from a film you know it's that kind of real cinematic look with the super wide screen the black bars the anamorphic flare the soft glowy light and of course that gorgeous color grade as well so let me show you again this is before and this is after uh, obviously a very slight adjustment to the uh, lens corrections uh, a small tweak to the exposure but everything else has been done by the presets i'll show you that side by side Amazing transformation. So this one's gone for a little bit more of a warm glow with Quest 23 preset 3. Color grade 3, which gives that nice warm tone in. Uh, we've dialed the Odeon profile down to give us a little bit of a punchy look. This would be it if it was up at 200. Uh, so if you really want to kind of emphasize that soft look. Actually, I think now that I've done the other edits, I'd probably go back up with Odeon so that we have a little bit more dynamic range. So I'm actually going to set that back to the default of 100. So this is before and this is after. Um, so yeah, you can either go for a bit of punchy look or a bit of a soft dreamy look uh, with that profile. So lots and lots of uh, kind of customization and choice, but I'm gonna leave that set to 100. Again, that's before and that's after. Very cinematic says Joey, thank you so much. Uh, I'm always learning general new editing tricks from these live editing sessions. You guys give us so much value. Just want to say thanks for being awesome. Oh, Alexandra, that's a really nice comment. Thank you so much. Appreciate that very, very much. Uh, I'm thinking the Texture Plus and the Rainbow tool, tool could be really good friends. Elizabeth, you are right. They would be fantastic friends. Definitely some good ones to try together there. That's the lovely thing with these masks. You know, you can uh, you can apply them to any type of image. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use the Quest 23 presets. You can use any and use these masks in conjunction with those. So definitely have a play around. It's good to mix and match. All these are included with the Odeon presets, asked Ruben. Yes, they are. They are all included. So Quest 23 has three base presets, three color grade presets, a creative profile, and then the additional tools to push that cinematic look. So lots of bang for your buck with our Quest subscription this month. Again, as a reminder, Quest is just $8 per month. Uh, that gives you uh, the ability to download a newly released set each and every month. Uh, and this set, Quest 23, will be coming out on the 1st of February. So if you like what you've seen and you're not already subscribed, head over to Archipelago Presets, uh, sorry, ArchipelagoQuest.com to check out our subscription and you can sign up today. You can either do monthly or you can do six months uh, at a time if you don't like to have a monthly outgoing. Uh, and six months is about the price, well, about half the price of a regular preset collection. So you can get six unique presets released each month. So each set released uh, across the six months plus bonus content and you get 30% discount on the regular presets all for half the price of a normal preset collection. So definitely, definitely worth checking out. You can either do monthly or six months at a time over on archipelagoquest.com. All right, this is a game changer, says Ruben. Thank you so much. Epic look, says Layla. Ooh, I will be waiting, says Aubrey. Yes, don't forget though, someone will be taking away a pre-release copy of this at the end of the stream. Uh, so do stick around, keep interacting. We're gonna select someone at the end of the stream to win pre-release copies uh, of Quest 23 Odeon. All right, so let's continue with the editing. We'll go into another image here. So image number two and then nine were selected next. So I'll go two next and then I'll do nine. But do let me know in the chat which image you want to see after that. You've got a thumbnail uh, in the top left, sorry, the number in the top left of the thumbnail uh, to select the image that you want to see next. And I'll try and go through them in that order. But let's do image number two, then image number nine. Uh, Perry says these are going to be a fantastic addition to the entire collection. Can't wait to employ these. Yes, Perry. Uh, very exciting addition. Uh, just can't wait for this one, says DK Lowry. Thank you very much. All right, so image number two. This one is by Luke Lambertson. I absolutely adore Luke's work. 
And this is no exception, gorgeous photo. Uh, love this kind of setup with this nice classic car. Uh, the subjects here, I love their outfits, just love the styling of this, um, especially the color of the flowers here as well. So let's go ahead and get the white balance and exposure set correctly. So I'm thinking maybe I need to back this off a little bit. Let's take a look at the tin. I think, yeah, probably somewhere around about there. Uh, bring the exposure up a little bit as well. All right, that's looking good. So let's take a look at these, AQ23-1. So again, it takes a second for it to figure out where the background and the subjects are. So each time you hover over, it's gonna just take a second. And once it's rendered the image and figured out where they are, um, they'll load obviously nice and quickly after that. So this is AQ23-1. So you can see that nice cinematic look, but it's again, quite subtle. Uh, it gives you a nice base to begin with, works across a nice broad range of images. But then if you want to push that further, you can use the rest of the tools here. AQ23-2. That's looking really good as well. So a little bit more neutral with a slightly cool uh, undertone. And then that one preset AQ23-3. I think for this, it's probably gonna be one. Uh, one or two, one or two. Oh, I don't know actually. Two's looking pretty good. Let's try two. Uh, got the Odeon profile, so I can increase or decrease that. I quite like the look on this when I increase it and get that uh, extra bit of dynamic range, bring the highlights down, lift the shadows up. That's looking good to me. And then let's take a look at the color grades. So color grade one, that kind of very uh, traditional cinematic look where it has that little bit of teal and orange vibe to it. Color grade two, a little bit more magenta and nice blues. Uh, and then color grade three with that overly uh, rich warmth. I think for this, I am drawn to color grade one. I love the green tone that comes in with color grade one. So again, this is it at 100. This is it all the way off and all the way up at 200. Uh, so at 200, you get that really stylized look, uh, which I absolutely adore. This is my favorite color grade, this one. Uh, so I'm probably gonna go relatively high with this, maybe about 157. So we can bring in some more of that green, uh, bring in some teal into the highlights and then warm up those shadows down here as well. So that's looking good to me. Let's take a look at, we could do a flare on this. So we've not really got any direct light on this. Now, when, when it comes to using the anamorphic flare and really any sort of uh, lens flare effect, you wanna make sure you're using it somewhere where you would naturally get flare. So don't go too wild. Don't go throwing this on every single image. Be quite selective with where you use it. But let's say we really wanted to use anamorphic flare on this image. And um, what you would want to think about is where would light reflect from or what points of light would be in the image. So if I go ahead and select anamorphic flare, and if I go into here, we can see that's there. So let's say this mirror here, if that was reflecting some light, we could place that there. And I can go ahead and increase or decrease that effect. So if I go somewhere around about there, and then we can change the actual uh, individual masks. So if I just brought that down a little bit, and then let's make this a little bit larger as well. So let's say we've got that there. And then in fact, what we can do is duplicate that layer and then drag that one and place it somewhere else. So if we said that there was some light glinting off this part of the, of the car as well. Uh, and this is not gonna be quite as intense. So let's just bring that down a bit and go ahead and resize this. So it's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more uh, subtle. Just gonna bring that down and then let's play around with the amount again. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe there look. So you could go for something like that. So again, you wanna use it somewhere where it looks quite natural, uh, but just to give you an idea of how you can sort of move it around and change the intensity and all that kind of stuff, uh, you've got lots of flexibility in these masks. All right, so let's take a look at the other options. Background texture minus. Uh, again, that's gonna soften up that background and separate the subjects a little bit. And then background texture plus. Now for this, I would probably use plus. So this is a really good example of where background texture plus just actually pulls in a little bit more uh, detail surrounding the subjects. And I think for this image, it looks really good because you get a little bit more separation with the car. The clouds have a little bit more texture as well. So if I select that, and then we can either increase or decrease that. So that's it off. Uh, and so let's go, let's get away. That's it off and that's it at 200. So I, I would crank it on this. I go all the way up to 200. Uh, and you can see it doesn't affect the subjects when I do that. It's only affecting the background of the image, but you can see it brings a little bit more color in. It brings a lot more texture in, a lot more detail to the surrounding areas of the image. And that definitely looks a lot more natural to me. 
Gonna go and play with the profile again and decide where I want that. I think about there and I think about there. And then cinematic haze, I probably wouldn't use it on this. No, I, I like the amount of texture we've got in the clouds. Obviously that's one of the brighter areas of the image. So if I use cinematic haze on this, it's gonna affect the sky and just kind of give that softened look. But I don't think I'd use that on this. I would just go for that more sort of dramatic look. Um, and I wouldn't use black bars. You can if you want, you can see it applies to the top and bottom, but it doesn't have that sort of cinematic look because you're expecting a widescreen image with the bars at the top and bottom. So again, only use it where it sort of makes sense. It might be that, you know, in with a shoot, you might have, you know, a couple of images where you use anamorphic flare and maybe like one image or something where you use the black bars just to kind of have something quite stylized and unique looking. Um, but yeah, I would say for the vertical images, I'd probably stay away from the black bars. So let's take a look at this. This is before an edited image. Again, gorgeous photo here by Luke. And this is the edit. This is using uh, Quest 23.2 and then Color Grade 1. We increased the color grade quite a lot, so we've got a little bit more of an emphasized look. We've got the profile set to 111, and then we went ahead and used the anamorphic flares just on the sides here, just for a bit of fun. Uh, we also used the background texture to bring in more detail in the background. There's your side by side, quite a, a, a bit of a transformation actually. Obviously a little bit of a white balance shift and, and stuff like that at the start, uh, but quite a nice transformation. If I go and zoom in to one of the subjects here, you can see the, uh, the kind of, color tones and the amount of dynamic range, the grain, it does have a nice subtle grain on this, uh, this these presets as well. Of course, you can go into the effects panel and turn the grain down if you want to, uh, but it's very nicely balanced. It's not um, uh, kind of a really intense grain. It's designed to be a nice subtle amount of texture and kind of gives that little bit of cinematic filmic look. Uh, without being too overpowering. So yeah, I think this looks really, really nice. I, again, I love that bit of green that's coming in, that tealy green that's coming into the highlights in the image, and then the warmth that's coming in through the shadows. So you can see down here, we've got those nice warm tone shadows there. So that really classic cinematic look. What we're saying in the chat, I think this is gonna be my favorite set, says Claudia, thank you so much. Skin tones still look great, says Layla. Yes, that was definitely one of the things that I wanted to uh, to make sure that I achieved with these was something that was flexible enough to still have really nice, accurate skin tones, uh, but while still you know pushing into that cinematic look. Um, I can see Angie's on, uh, tuning in from New Zealand. Good morning, Angie. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sky saver and a touch of blue sky, asked Elizabeth. We could do. Uh, there is a bit of blue in this sky anyway, and um, with Texture Plus, it kind of brought that in. But of course, you can mix these. So we could go in and do Sky Saver, which would emphasize that more. I probably wouldn't go like too intense. I would probably go around about there. And I personally don't think I'd use Sky Blue because it's going to make it like very blue, but that's going to be, you know, personal preference. Uh, but I think the natural amount of blue that we're getting through versus the original, I think is good to me, but yeah, Sky Saver definitely would, uh, would add to this. I'm just amazed how pretty much all your presets look good on any of the photos you apply them on. Prior, I find when I've bought presets from other places, that is so not the case. Obviously a big fan. Thank you, Alexandra. We definitely strive for that. And we work very, very hard when we develop these to test them on a massively broad range um, of images and different scenes and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely a massive part of the development process for us developers um, to just make sure these are gonna work for as many people as possible. So really happy to hear that's what you found. Uh, Aubrey says, oh, this is so satisfying to see these already beautiful images turn into the most amazing art. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you so much, Aubrey. Good to have you on. What are the qualities of this specific profile in a nutshell? I would say in a nutshell, it's dynamic range. So essentially dragged all the way to the left when it's on zero, you're gonna get a good amount of contrast and punch. Uh, and when you drag it all the way to the right, you're gonna lift the shadows up, you're gonna bring the highlights down uh, and therefore kind of bring more dynamic range into your image. So that's in a nutshell what the profile does. These presets are changing the game for me. I've never had uh, so many compliments like I get now that I've started using Archipelago. Love watching these editing videos, still learning so much. We're always learning, Angie. Thank you so much for the kind compliment uh, and great to hear that you enjoy these live streams. All right, so image nine. 
Uh, let me just scroll back up and see if anyone picked any other images. Uh, yes, DK Larry picked six. So I'll do nine, then six, and then whatever you want to see after that. So do let me know. Keep throwing your questions in as well. If, uh, if I can answer them on the stream, I absolutely will. Thank you very much. All right, so image number nine, another one from Luke, straight after look. Uh, so this one is absolutely stunning. As soon as this uh, came through to us, um, I was just like, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous photo. Um, I love the way that the subjects are posed. I love the the light and how they're in this sort of bit of uh, sh open shadow, but nice and brightly lit. Um, the texture in the rock is just a gorgeous photo. So uh, amazing work, Luke, as always. So I'm gonna bring the exposure up on this. I'm just gonna bring the uh, tint down just a tiny bit. That's looking good to me. I think the exposure's probably good. I probably wouldn't change that. So let's take a look, AQ23-1. Again, give it a second to render. That looks super, super nice. So you can see it just kind of brings a little bit of the uh, the color out of the rock, kind of tames that down a little bit. Uh, still got really nice skin tones there. A little bit of an emphasis uh, on the uh, kind of cream tones here. And you can see the little bit of color that we've got in the bouquet and stuff, how that shifts. Uh, so that's looking very, very nice. Um, like I said before, you can apply this preset and actually use the amount slider. You wouldn't necessarily want to do this with all of the presets. Um, you, you will definitely find that sometimes you just want to dial it back a little bit or tweak it up a little bit. But for some images, you'll find that increasing or decreasing this can look really nice. So for this look, you can go ahead and push a little bit more of like a pronounced look by bringing it up. I definitely wouldn't go up too high. Like if you start cranking it up to 200, it's going to look a bit wacky. Uh, but you can definitely kind of increase it by sort of uh, 30 or so and, and obviously decrease it for a little bit more of a neutral look. But just so you can see that that's what you can do with the mount slider. So that's AQ23-1. AQ23-2, so again, a little bit more of a neutral look. Um, the shadows are a little bit more lifted, so a little bit less contrast. Has those nice blues running through it, uh, a little bit cooler. And then we have AQ23-3 with that nice rich warmth. Uh, the greens shift a little bit with this one, which you'll see on another image where we've got some greens in it. Uh, you'll see how each preset has kind of a unique approach to the yellows and greens. Um, and I think for this, I would probably go uh, AQ23-1. Uh, let's have a quick look at the profile. So again, this is gonna set the dynamic range. All the way to the left, you get that punchier look. All the way to the right, you get that softer, uh, more dynamic range uh, look. And for this, I'll probably go, mm, maybe leave it at 100 for now. I think that's looking good. We've kind of got sort of back backlight. So it's open shade here, but there is a little bit of light popping in from the back there. Uh, so I might wanna decrease the profile, but we'll have a look in a moment. So color grade one, that's looking really, really nice. I love that on this image. Uh, color grade two, that's looking good as well. So you can see it brings a lot more magenta into the highlights uh, and those blues into the shadows there. That's a lovely look for this image. And then color grade three with that nice rich warmth and the way it just shifts some of the uh, other colors over. You get a little bit more punch with that one as well. I would be tempted to go for color grade three or two or one. <laughs> I don't know, help me out. Which would you go for? This is color grade one. Color grade two and color grade three. Let me know what you think. Can't wait to play around with these, says Joey. Not long to wait, my friend. Looks great, said Perry, thank you. Those flares too. Love it with Sky Saber, yep, thank you so much. Uh, here we go, Aubrey says I like two, Joey said one. The preset is amazing, color grade three, says Elizabeth. Claudia says two, two for me, one, one. Okay, we've got another one of those stalemates where <laughs> everyone's selecting different ones. Let's go for two. I, I was drawn to two, I like that kind of, it's a little bit more of a romantic look. Uh, oh, wait, preset one, color grade two. Uh, we're with the magenta highlights and a little bit more blue in the shadows. Again, we've got the amount slider, so this is set to 100, this is it at zero, and this is it all the way up at 200. I would probably leave it at 100, I think. That looks good to me. And then let's play around with the uh, profile now that we've got the color grade on there. Yeah, so I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. It just adds a little bit more uh, of a punch to the image, a little bit more contrast, uh, which looks good. So again, this is before and after. That's looking absolutely stunning. Uh, let's take a look at the tools. I don't, well, I wouldn't use, 
anamorphic flare on this. You could, I mean, you could theoretically pop it up here somewhere if you imagine there's a bit of light popping through, but there's not really any direct light on this. So I wouldn't use anamorphic flare on this one, but I think background texture is probably gonna be one that we use. So this is it with minus, where we get that nice soft look to the image. This could be good if you want to reduce the texture in the background. So if I zoom in a little bit here, so we can see the subjects and we can see the background. If I go uh, background texture minus, this is it at zero and this is it at 200. So you can really see what it's doing to the texture there and how it just kind of really softens that up uh, without affecting the subject. And then we also just lift up the shadows a little bit on the subject and add a bit more texture. So if I go ahead and zoom back out on that, again, zero, 200. So you get that really nice dreamy effect. Uh, or we can go the other way, background texture plus and we can emphasize the texture in the rock. So this is at zero, this is it at 200. And I would probably emphasize that texture. I think it looks really nice. So I'm gonna set that to about 131. Again, this before and after looking super nice. Uh, let's have a quick look at the white balance. I'm just gonna bring the warmth down a little bit in the temperature slider. There we go, that's looking absolutely stunning to me. And then the only other one that you may wanna use on this would be cinematic haze. Uh, and you can see that's just gonna affect sort of this area at the top here where you've got that light. Uh, so if we go ahead and apply that, and then we can either bring that down or up. Uh, for this, I'd go very, very subtle. So I'll probably just bring it up just a tiny little bit. So again, that's before and after. So we just get a little bit of softening to the light that's bursting in through the top there. And there is the side-by-side. -side. So that was AQ23-1, color grade two. Uh, and then we've used background texture plus and a cinematic uh, haze. And the profile will brought back down just to give a little bit more punch to the image as well. All right, what we're saying? <laughs> oh gosh, I love them all, says Lauren. Yep. <laughs> uh, Alexander also said, but I mean, all of them look good. It's true. Difficult decision. Uh, Alexandra agreed. I was thinking I'd like to emphasize the rock. So yep, there you go. It's nice to have uh, the uh, flexibility to go one way or the other way. Stunner, I love this image so much, says Aubrey. I agree, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous photo. Luke is an absolute genius. Ugh, cinematic haze, says Alexandra. I love cinematic haze. It looks very, very good. Uh, some images are cranking it all the way up to 200 can look super nice. All right, so let's keep rolling through these. That was image uh, nine. We've done one and two as well. And then I think six was picked uh, by someone earlier. So let's go ahead and do image number six. So this one here from Emma Wand, this is a really lovely photo. Um, we've got kind of the subjects here sat in the water, these lovely ripples, uh, and it kind of has a very cinematic look already. So it's gonna work very, very well for these presets. So let's go ahead and Bring the exposure up a little bit, somewhere around there. Let's take a look at the white balance. I'm just gonna bring the temperature down a little bit on that and let's bring the tint up a tiny touch. I think probably somewhere around about there. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so AQ23-1 and that's a lovely transformation. Uh, again, we get that nice cinematic look. It's subtle enough that it's not kind of too stylized initially, but again, we've got the flexibility with this set of really pushing that stylized look, but that looks very, very nice to me. Here's AQ23-2. We get that little bit uh, kind of more cool tone in. That suits the, uh, the kind of blues in the water where the, uh, the shadows are. And then AQ23-3 for that little bit more warm tone in. There's a little bit more green in there as well. This is without and this is with. Uh, I would say for this, I would be tempted to go for either one or two. I would probably go one actually, looking at this. Uh, yeah, go ahead for one. So uh, let's just play around with the amount. Yeah, so for this image, I would probably just bump up the amount slider a little bit, 115, so a slight increase. Uh, and you can see this is before and this is after, so it just adds a little bit more of a kind of punch to this image without going too drastic. We've got the profile, so this is it all the way at zero and all the way at 200. Now for this, I would want to increase it, get more dynamic range in there. So I'm gonna set that to about 126. And then let's have a look, color grade one, color grade two, and color grade three. And this is gonna be a tough one, I think. Uh, I 
would be tempted by color grade two on this as well. And I'm gonna crank it up a bit. So we've got the uh, kind of tones of AQ23 one, and then the color grade of uh, color grade two over the top. I'm gonna to bring it up quite a bit, but then I'm gonna offset that with a little bit more temperature in the white balance. So somewhere around there. And I'm gonna bring the profile back down just a little bit. So this is before and this is after. So quite a big transformation on this image. Again, we just bumped the, uh, the actual preset up just a tiny bit on the amount slider and that's given us that extra bit of punch. Um, so that's looking lovely. I love the blues and the water here as well. And then kind of the contrast against the warm skin tones. Uh, background texture minus, we would get that kind of uh, separation effect, which I think would probably work really well on this. Uh, background texture plus would emphasize the texture in the background. You could go either way, but I think minus for this, so we get a little bit more of that separation and depth of field almost. And we're probably gonna crank it, put it up at 200, because we still see the texture in the water, uh, but it's not kind of as prominent. Your eyes really drawn to the subjects, especially this one here with the eye contact. I think a very captivating image. Uh, so again, this is before and after. Uh, and this is another image where, you know, you don't have any direct light. So you wouldn't necessarily use anamorphic flare, but you could simulate, you know, light bouncing off kind of the, the, the top of one of these small ripples here. You could kind of pop anamorphic flare on there, resize it, all that kind of stuff. But I don't think I would on this particular image. Uh, let's have a look at cinematic haze. So again, you can see that just kind of softens up the top part of the frame where the light's coming in and gives us that little bit of a dreamier look. So this is it at zero. This is it at 200. Um, again, I probably wouldn't go too high, but I think a little bit of this uh, gives us more of that cinematic look where we get that bit of bloom in the light. So I think about there, 44. And let's just bring the overall exposure down a tiny touch. I would probably go somewhere around about there. So this is before and this is after. That's with AQ23-1. Color grade two, which we cranked both of those two up using the amount sliders. Uh, the profile set to 83. We've used the background texture minus, which has softened up the background texture, and then cinematic haze. And finishing this off, I would be tempted to go for, let's see what the crop looks like, because it's gonna be a little bit tight. Let's have a little look. Maybe about there, let's see what the black bars look like. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. Uh, a tiny bit more I think I could get away with. Uh, yeah, maybe just a tiny bit more. It's nice that you can kind of preview this by hovering over the black bars just to see where they are. Uh, you want to do the crop first um, before you apply it. I mean, if you if you apply the preset and then change the crop, you can just reapply the preset again and it will put the black bars where they are. But it's easier to sort of get the crop right first and then go ahead and apply the black bars. Um, if you ever find, let me just simulate it on this image. Uh, so I'm just gonna whack the exposure up uh, all the way. So if you ever find on an image, when you apply the black bars, if you see this kind of look here, this is just where the that area of the image uh, had a very, very high exposure, was very overexposed, but still had some de detail in that, that area, some data. Uh, you might see when you apply the, the preset, uh, the black bars preset, it kind of looks like this. All you need to do if that's the case is go up to the amount slider and just bring it up and that'll just kind of get rid of them. So you won't find it on many images, it's just if they're super bright in the sky or something, but you can just bring that up to kind of mitigate that if you ever see it. So there's a little tip for you, let me just undo that. So there we go, this is before, and this is after. Gorgeous, gorgeous photo here by Emma. Very cinematic look to begin with. I love the uh, engaging eye contact from the subject. I love the ripples in the water. We've just emphasized a little bit that blue tone in, uh, maintained the warmth in the skin of the subjects. So we get that nice uh, kind of contrast between the two. And then we've used the background texture minus and cinematic haze, and then gone and done a 16 by nine crop with the black bars to really give that cinematic look. And there's the side by side look in super cool. I, I wanna watch this film, whatever it is. I wanna see this one. What we're saying, I absolutely adore your editing live, guys. They are, they are inspiring and Odeon is stunning. Thank you, Kea, I really appreciate that. Wait, where do you find the black bars? You find them at the bottom. It's the, the last tool in the set. 
Uh, so it's after cinematic haze, you can apply black bars and that uses the masks to apply these black bars to the image to simulate that widescreen look of uh, cinema. Yep to the bars. Yes, the bar says Joey, thank you. Woo, 16 by nine with the letterboxing looks so good, says Chris. Yes, it's all about that cinematic 16 by nine look. The black bars actually transport you to a theatre, so cinematic. Thank you, Aubrey. Yeah, definitely something that, you know, you're not necessarily going to use them on all the images in a shoot, but I think for that certain image, it can really give that look of a still from a film and really harkens back to that cinematic uh, vibe that we, we all love, I'm sure. Uh, Angelique says, I love cinematic. It's my absolute favourite. Love that. All right, so... We are rocking and rolling. We've got a few images left to go. So uh, jump in and let me know what you want to see next. We'll try and rattle through these a bit quicker. Uh, try and get the stream wrapped up by on the hour. So let me know which ones you want to see next. Uh, while I'm waiting for you to choose, I'm going to dive in and do one. Let's go for image number four. Uh, Alexander says three, so we'll do that one next. Thank you. Uh, it's going to crop this a little bit. This one here. Uh, by Sinova. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous photo um, at Lieben Photo on Instagram. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the exposure up a little bit. Let's set the white balance. I'm going to warm it up a tiny touch as well. That's looking good to me. Don't want to brighten it too much. I think I want to keep that uh, low key look. So let's take a look. AQ23 1, AQ23 2, and AQ23 3. I'm drawn to 3. I love the kind of toning in the background. This is unedited and this is with the preset. Uh, let's take a look at the profile. So I think for this, definitely want to increase it, give us that more uh, dynamic range. Uh, kind of looks a little bit softer, a little bit warmer in the background there, which is nice. All right, color grade 1, color grade 2, and color grade 3. I'm definitely going for one. I think it looks super nice on this and I would be tempted to go for a really stylized look. So I'm gonna increase this uh, to about 135. This is without and this is with. Uh, let's get the exposure where I want it. I think somewhere around there. Uh, again, I'm not gonna do anamorphic flare on this uh, just because it doesn't really have any point of light. Uh, background texture minus would soften up that background. Obviously it's quite a, uh, there's not a lot of texture going on in the background anyway. And then uh, texture plus. Uh, what you can do is you can see how it shapes the light. So this is texture minus, a little bit more soft. And then texture plus, you can see it just kind of pushes a little bit more into that. So actually, although there's not a lot of texture in the background, I might use this just to kind of illuminate the background and add a bit more of that nice sandy color. And then cinematic haze, again, it's only going to apply to sort of the right of the image here where the light's coming from. Uh, and I wouldn't go crazy, just a little bit, about 55. So this is unedited, and this is edited with uh, AQ23. Which one did I use? I think I used one, was it? Let's have a look. Oh, three. AQ23, three. And then we used color grade one. Uh, increase the profile to 200. We use the background texture plus just to add a little bit more shape and color into the background. And then we've used the cinematic haze, uh, just set to 55 for a little bit of that softening and blooming. Here's the before, here's after, and there is your side by side. Very, very nice. If I zoom in here, you can see the, uh, the details as well. That lovely grain in the background. Um, the shape of the light is absolutely gorgeous on this image and the toning is lovely so you can see there's a little bit of like green toning in the highlights uh, the nice warm uh, toning running throughout the whole image you can see the uh, the foliage down here kind of retains that nice green there we go what we're saying another stunning photo said alexandra thank you so much This is amazing. The cinematic haze is so good here as well. Thank you. Yes, another stunning edit. All right, cool. So what would you say in three, image three, and then image five. So image three, this one by Francesco. Francesco's work is absolutely gorgeous. I love this image. It's got a really nice softness to it already. I love the kind of really close up perspective. Just gonna go ahead and set the white balance. Gonna bring the warmth up quite a bit there. And let's take a look at the tint. That's looking good to me. I think exposure is good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the presets. So AQ23 1, 
AQ23-2 and AQ23-3. I would be tempted by one or three. I'm gonna go for three, I think, on this. And then color grade one, two, and three. I would be tempted by maybe three, really go for that warm look. If you go for pre preset three and color grade three, it really emphasizes that warm look. But before I, before I apply the color grade, I might have a little play with the profile amount. So I'm gonna bring the profile up a decent amount just to kind of give us a little bit of a punchier look to the image. I'm gonna bring the exposure down a tiny bit. Uh, profile, I think, ooh, I don't know which way to go. Maybe bring it down so we get a little bit more depth in the shadows here. And then let's go color grade three, but I'm gonna back it off so it's just nice and subtle. I don't wanna go super, super warm. All right, so uh, again with this one, we could do anamorphic flare. We could, we could again sort of simulate light bouncing off uh, the water down here. So if I went for anamorphic flare and select it in the mask panel, bring that down to here. And for this, I'd wanna go very, very subtle. So let's go for that little bit there. I'm gonna bring the overall exposure down quite a bit. I'm gonna select the actual flare and I'm gonna bring that down so it's much smaller and a little bit narrower. And I'm also gonna bring down the little bloom of light. So it's sort of there. And let's take a look. Yeah, I'd probably go relatively subtle just so it blends in with the image. And then duplicate and select that one. And let's bring it up to, let's imagine this little droplet here was reflecting the light as well. If I pop that, just there and again, resize this, go nice and small, a little bit narrower and bring the bloom of light down a little bit. And this one, I might go a tiny bit brighter, so maybe like there. So let's take a look. This is unedited and this is edited and that's with AQ23.3. We boosted the preset strength using the amount slider. Uh, decrease the profile for a little bit more contrast and then use color grade three, uh, just a little bit of color grade three for the extra bit of warmth. Uh, we've then popped a couple of anamorphic flares on there. Background texture minus would emphasize the softening that's already there in the image. Background texture plus would sort of bring back a bit more detail. Let's have a look. This is uh, plus, yeah, I'd probably go for that. Just brings in a little bit more contrast and color. So there we go, and then we could do, we could do a little 16 by nine on this one. It's quite a tight uh, kind of image anyway, in terms of the way that it's been uh, shot. But I think we could go for that and the black bars. So it really looks like a still from a movie. And then cinematic haze, yeah, maybe let's have a look. This is it off and all the way up to 200. Again, a little bit of that just to kind of soften up the light that's coming in through the top of the frame there. And that's probably what I would do. So this is unedited and this is edited. And there's your side by side. And again, literally looks like a still from a movie. Absolutely love it. I've been really enjoying using the, uh, the black bars and the anamorphic flares uh, on my images. What are we saying? The hands in this photo are so expressive. Preset really matches the mood. Yes, I agree, Layla, thank you so much. Love, says Elizabeth. Give me all the warmth, says Angie. There you go, you've got it. Uh, so beautiful, I love the little glints that the flare gives, says Lise, thank you. Do love the black bars here as well. Uh, Kea says, uh, perfection, beautiful image and very cinematic final effect. Thank you very much. All right, so. Uh, five was the next one. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we've got seven, eight, and 10. So let's get these done nice and quickly. So this one here from Amy, gorgeous photo, lovely backlit scene again, quite underexposed. So I'm gonna bring the exposure up a decent amount. Uh, let's take a look at the white balance. Maybe, uh, no, I wanna, I wanna maintain the warmth. I think that looks good on this image and just back off the tint a tiny bit. Uh, yep, that looks good to me. AQ23-1. AQ23-2 and AQ23-3. I would be tempted to go for one on this. I'm gonna bring the exposure back down. I want to keep that sort of like underexposed look. 
you can really see what the profile does on this image. So uh, all the way to the left, you get that kind of real difference between the highlights and the shadows. All the way to the right, it kind of softens the difference between the two, lifts up those shadows, brings down the highlights. And I think for this, I would probably crank it up a decent amount just so we get a little bit of a softer result. Uh, and then let's take a look. Color grade one, color grade two, and color grade three. Uh, usually anything where you've got like uh, kind of sunset vibes, golden hour, color grade three is gonna work really, really well because you get that nice rich warmth. So I'm gonna go for color grade three on that one. And then let's take a look at cinematic haze could work well on this. Uh, you can see it's just gonna soften the light around the, the trees and I think probably crank it all the way up. I really like the effect here in the image. Uh, so that's it kind of cranked up nice and high. I'd probably go for that. Uh, background texture minus. Uh, I would probably go for minus just to kind of uh, soften up some of that uh, foliage in the background. Uh, so set that to about 45, so nothing too drastic. That's gonna look good to me. Uh, so we've got cinematic haze on that already. Uh, and let's do it, why not? Let's do it, 16 by nine crop. Uh, black bars, yeah. Actually, no, for this, I'm gonna leave the crop as, as it was because I don't wanna chop off that tree. So let's just leave it as it is and use black bars. Yeah, there we go, still looks very cinematic. Um, so there we go, that's AQ23-3. Uh, uh, sorry, AQ23-1, color grade three. Increase the profile, we've used cinematic haze to soften up the light in the background. Uh, we're not gonna use anamorphic flare on this, I don't think, but you could do, you could go ahead and chuck it in the background where the light's popping through there. But I think uh, for this, it looks nice as it is. Uh, I'd be tempted just to bring the tint down a tiny little bit and the exposure down to about there. So there you go, that's before and that's after. And there's your side by side. Gary says, love that you're bringing back the cinematic crops. Not sure how you're gonna to top this preset. We will, don't worry, we will. <laughs> Thank you though, Gary, appreciate it. Uh, Sarah says, and yet somehow they keep managing to do it. Yeah, there you go. We'll manage it, don't you worry. All right, so we've got image number seven, eight, and 10. So I'm just gonna work through those ones. Uh, I don't wanna keep you too much longer before we announce a winner for a pre-release copy of these presets. Again, this is Quest 23. Uh, this one's called Odeon, it's a cinematic set and it's going to be coming out on the 1st of February as part of our Quest subscription series. You can become a subscriber right now uh, by paying just $8 and then on the 1st you'll be able to download this set for free as part of your membership. Uh, you also get to download previously released sets and purchase those from the archive store uh, and you get 30% off the regular presets as well. Go and check that out, archipelagoquest.com. All right, so this one here from Anna. This is a gorgeous photo. I love this nice, simple setup. This is a beautiful sofa, a very nice orange color. So let's go ahead and bring the exposure up a little bit. I'm gonna set the lens corrections on because we've got a little bit of vignette there. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more warmth somewhere around there, but I think the tint looks okay to me. So let's take a look at AQ23-1, AQ23-2, and AQ23, three. I would be tempted by three on this, although one, look, um, actually no, I'm gonna go one. So AQ23, one. I'm just gonna bring the tint down a tiny little bit. That's looking good to me. Uh, ODM profile set to 100 as default. This is it at zero. This is it at 200. I'm gonna keep it at the default of 100. And I would say for this, I'll probably go uh, texture minus, just to kind of, soften up the background and bring a little bit more texture into the subject. So I'm gonna go around about there. And I don't think I'd use cinematic haze. There's not a lot of uh, light going on in this. It's just a white wall behind them. So it's not really gonna do a, a massive amount. And again, no anamorphic flare on this. Uh, just keep it nice and simple, but we can see uh, a lovely clean edit, subtly cinematic. So this is how you can use it uh, in a more subtle way rather than going for a really dramatic cinematic look. Uh, so it's very flexible. Um, you can still use the color grades and all those kinds of things uh, to give you the look that you want, but you can just go for something more subtle. Uh, if I was gonna go for a color grade on this, I would go color grade one and give us that more stylistic look. Maybe set it to around about 130 
38. Uh, again, bringing a little bit of that green into the skin tones. We get that kind of cool toning in the highlights, warmth in the shadows. So that's what I would do if I wanted the stylized look. Again, that's your before and that's your after. And there's your side by side. Gorgeous tones, says Lauren. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Uh, Blue says, cost of a bubble tea or a Starbucks coffee, it's worth each penny. I could not agree more. Thank you very much. Uh, lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, my clients will need to wait until next week for delivery. I will want this now for my edits. Taking a few days off, going to the movies. Awesome work yet again. Thank you so much, Joel. Enjoy your uh, time off and we'll get these over to you as soon as we can. <laughs> All right, so image eight. This one is absolutely gorgeous. This one here by Kea. I love this photo. It's so, so cinematic already. We've got um, some smoke and some haze there. This backlight, the candlelight, it's absolutely stunning. As soon as I saw this photo, I was like, this is going to be perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and straighten it up a tiny little bit. Uh, in terms of the white balance, this is a bit of a trickier one because you've got natural light coming in and then we've got the warmth of the candle down here. So um, I might be tempted to go a little bit cooler and go for a more dramatic cinematic look. And I would usually kind of uh, opt to go a little bit lower on the tint. So I'm going to set that around about there. Uh, the exposure is, we'll see, we'll see what we do, but I'm going to leave it, uh, I've increased it a tiny little bit. Uh, lens correction. Yeah, a little bit of lens correction. Uh, although the tiny bit of vignette that you get uh, from the lens is actually nice. So I'm gonna leave that as is. But let's take a look at the presets and then I'll go ahead and tweak the exposure and stuff from there. So AQ23-1, give that a second to render. That's looking very, very nice. Uh, so that's AQ23-1. AQ23-2, that's looking very good as well. And then AQ23-3. This is a tough one. I'm going to go for AQ23-1, I think. And let me just see if I want to increase the actual preset strength. Yeah, maybe a little bit. So I'm going to bring this up a bit. Now for this, I'm going to go for a really cinematic look. So um, I'm not kind of striving for super accurate skin tones, things like that. What I'm going for is something very, very stylized. Uh, and let's take a look at the color grades. Color grade one color grade two and color grade three. I am going to go for one, get that very sort of uh, traditional cinematic look. And I'm probably going to push that up fairly high, maybe about 160. I'm going to play with the exposure. I think somewhere around there looks good. And then let's play around with the white balance. So I'm going to bring it across to the cool side a little bit more. I like the blues that are coming through the skylight there with the smoke uh, and then the contrasting warmth down here. Uh, all right, so anamorphic flare. We could definitely use a flare on this one. It's going to work really well. So I'm going to apply the flare, select it in the mask panel. Let's move that over to, let's say, like here, as if the light's just bursting from behind the subject's head there. Uh, let's play around with the amount. I'm going to go around about there. So I've just brought it down a little tiny bit. 88 I've set it to. Uh, so this... Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the actual flare and I'm going to bring this part of the flare, which is sort of the, the orb of light. I'm going to bring that up to be quite a bit bigger. And then obviously we've got the flare that's coming across. Uh, I might extend that just a little bit to go for a more pronounced look. All right, that's looking very cool. Uh, so let's go for that. And then let's see, we've got the background texture minus and background texture plus. Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't know whether I wanna go for plus maybe on this. Let's have a look. This is off and this is it up. Mm, no, actually, I'm gonna go minus. I'm gonna go for a softer look. So this is it at zero, this is it at 200. Yeah, definitely, I'm going for that dreamy soft look. So I'm gonna crank that up to 200. Cinematic haze, I'm gonna go for as well, which is just gonna bloom those highlights in a really nice way. So this is at zero. You can see it's gonna affect this area where the window is, the reflection there as well. So I'm gonna crank that up. So let's go, let's go nice and high. I'm gonna bring that up to maybe about there. I'm gonna bring the exposure down a tiny little bit. And actually, let's go for another, uh, let's go for another anamorphic flare. So I'm going to jump into here, select the anamorphic flare and duplicate it. I'm going to grab that and bring it down to the candle. 
So I'm going to pop that there. I'm going to resize this. So I'm going to first of all bring the orb of light down so it's a lot smaller. And then let's select the actual flare and bring that down so it's much smaller as well and a lot skinnier because our point of light is much smaller. This one, I think I'm going to go for a little bit of a brighter look. But what I'm going to do is where it says color down here, uh, we can click on that and you can actually change the color of the flare. So as default, it's slightly blue toned, very, very subtly blue toned. Uh, but because we've got this candle light, which is really warm, I'm going to move that across to something a little bit warmer and set the saturation somewhere about there. So it's got a little bit of a warmth look uh, to it. So again, this is without and with, and that's just again, a nice contrast versus the, the cool tone flare coming in through the window. Uh, so that's looking really good. This is before and after quite a big transformation. Uh, let me just check out the profile. Yeah, I'm definitely going to crank that all the way up and set the exposure and let's go for that nice cinematic crop 16 by nine. And it's going to be a relatively tight, uh, tight crop. Just going to make sure that the subjects aren't cropped off the top and bottom when the black bars are applied. So I'm going to bring it down probably quite low. So the flare will just come in. Yeah, I think somewhere around here. It's a little tight, but actually I think it's going to look good. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Yeah, super, super nice. So we get that gorgeous flare running along the top. The little bit of flare where the candle is at the bottom here. Um, I would be tempted just to bring the warmth up just a bit. Yeah, that's looking good. So a little bit of a warmer look. Let's offset the cool tones in the top there. So again, this is before and this is after. Stunning, stunning photo. Already super cinematic. Uh, and with the uh, Quest 23 Odeon presets, we've just really emphasized and pushed that uh, a bit further. And there's your before and after side by side. Kay says, I'm so happy you like it. I have to admit, I really miss this bathroom. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous photo, Kay. You are very, very talented. Thank you so much for submitting your image. I absolutely love how you use the flare here. It looks stunning. I definitely need this flare in my life. The contrast of the blues and oranges is fabulous, says Layla. Thank you very much. You need to create a tutorial on how to choose where to place the flare. Basically, if you've got any direct point of light in an image, uh, it doesn't matter how large or small that point of light is because you can adjust the size of the flare, but anywhere where there is light that's coming straight into the camera, whether that's direct or reflected or something, that will work really well with the flare, but you don't want to use it uh, somewhere where you've got very soft light because that wouldn't naturally happen. Uh, flare tends to happen when you've got light coming straight into the lens, so that's where I'd use it. Uh, I would want to move the photo down a bit to see more of the blonde head maybe. Yes, I agree. Um, I would say that uh, this is a little too tight to kind of have the 16 by 9 and the black bars. Um, I would like to see a little bit more of that subject at the bottom. But just to show you what it could look like, I thought I'd go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, you could go ahead. If we wanted to turn the black bars off, we could just go oh, turn both of them off. That would help. Uh, so we could go for that. 16 by 9 crop or we could just go for the regular uh, crop of the image but yeah either way looks super super nice all right so last photo this one over here and this one is bright by bruno and again we've got another great image that's going to work really well with a cinematic edit uh, so we've got the subject sat on the road here motorbike behind with the headlight on and this amazing sky and detail in the background so very underexposed image to begin with so what i'm going to do is start with a lens correction uh, and then bring the exposure up i'm going to bring the temperature up uh, i would say that this is looking like it's a sunset image so i'm going to give a little bit more warmth and then let's take a look at the preset. So AQ23-1. Give it a second to figure out where the subject is. So there we go. That's AQ23-1. AQ23-2. And then AQ23-3. And I would be tempted by, let's see, one or three. I might go three because we've got that sort of sunset look. So preset three, I'm going to play around with the amount for the actual preset. Again, I'm going to bring this up a bit, not super, super high, but just a bit to kind of give us a little bit more of a punchy look 
to the image. I'm gonna keep a little bit of a silhouette look here, but I wanna bring a little bit of detail out in the subject. Uh, so I'm going to use Silver Reflector from the AI tool set. And this is gonna bring the exposure of the subject up a little bit, bring the exposure of the background down. You can see how that works. So that's gonna give us a little bit more balance between the two elements in the image. So already we're looking really, really good. So this one is AQ233. Uh, the profile is giving us the option of either having a little bit more contrast or having more dynamic range. I'm gonna go somewhere in between, so about 140. And then color grade one, color grade two, and color grade three. I'm gonna go fully in on the warmth for this and go for that kind of uh, cinematic warm look. So very, very uh, neutral tone in, overly warm. I think that's gonna suit this really, really well. So I think somewhere around there. And of course, we've got to do an anamorphic flare because we have the headlights pointing straight into the camera for this. We've actually already got a bit of natural flare just down here. So I'm gonna place that directly over where the headlight is. And again, I'm just gonna change the shape of this. So this is a little bit wider. And then the actual flare, I can determine how wide I want that. I'm gonna go around about there, I think. Let's check out the intensity. So for this, I'll probably go relatively intense. So I'm gonna maybe leave it the default of 100. So that's looking really, really good. And let's take a look at the texture. So texture minus and texture plus. I think texture minus is looking nice. I like the amount of softness it's given us. Uh, and it's just kind of given us a little bit of bloom of the light around the subject there. Uh, cinematic haze, I think we've got to use cinematic haze. That's gonna look really good. It's just gonna, again, soften up the light in the sky. So this is it at zero. This is it at 200. Uh, I'm not gonna go all the way up to 200, but I'm gonna leave it about 88. So it's gonna bloom those highlights and soften up uh, the detail in the sky. So let's see, I think around about there. And then let's go for 16 by nine somewhere around there, and then hover over the black bars to see. That's gonna look super cool, I think. Tiny little bit more of adjustment, and then black bars. Boom, look at that. Absolutely incredible. So there's your before and after. Again, wonderful image here from Bruno. Uh, very, very good uh, image for a cinematic edit. And obviously with the flare added, this really rich warm toning that we're getting from Quest 23 Preset 3, and the color grade three on top of that as well. We've used the Odeon profile to bring back detail in the subject whilst also keeping detail in the sky. We've used this, uh, the silver reflector from the AI tool set. Again, that is free to newsletter subscribers. Uh, so subscribe to our Archipelago Presets newsletter and you can get the AI tool set for free. And then we've also used cinematic haze, background texture minus, and black bars to really push that look. So again, that's bef uh, before. And that is after. This set would be amazing with car photography, says Shana. Yes, I actually posted an image in the Archipelago Collective Facebook group that was a little car shot that I'd snapped one out and about my Leica. And this set worked really, really well on that. Uh, let's have a look. Dang, says Joey. Uh, I love this edit, says Angelique. Thank you. This is straight out of a movie, says Lloyd has an inside Lewin, uh, Lewin Davis vibe, yeah. Alexandra said, amazing. Joey said, perfect. It's like a still out of motorcycle diary, says Elizabeth. This is so beautiful, I need this perfect for weddings too. There we go, boom. So let me go back out to the uh, thumbnails here so we can see uh, these are all updated now with the edits that we've made. So again, a nice variety. You can see we've got some warmer edits, some cooler edits. Somewhere we've got a little bit of mixture. Those nice cinematic black bars, the anamorphic flare. Lots and lots to love about this set. Again, these are coming out on the 1st of February. So if you are subscribed to Archipelago Quest, you can get your hands on this on the 1st of February. 
so you can go ahead and sign up now if you aren't already. If you sign up now, you can download this current month set and then on the first, you'll get your hands uh, on Quest 23 Odeon as well. So it's a good time to sign up if not already. Just $8 will get you a membership. Uh, so definitely worth checking that out immediately. In a moment, we're going to announce a winner for a pre-release copy of these presets. So thank you to everyone for tuning in and sticking around and commenting as we go through this. Uh, it's always nice to have you uh, join us for these. I really appreciate it. I love doing these little edit sessions, giving you a sneak peek of the presets. Uh, and it's great when we have some nice interaction in the chat there as well. So thank you very much. Uh, while I've got your attention, please do give this video a like. Um, you're all subscribed to the channel if you're in the chat, but if you're watching this back and you're not subscribed, do subscribe to our channel. That helps us out massively. Uh, and there we go. Lauren has announced that the winners, Alexandra, Joey, Aubrey, and Elizabeth, you're all getting pre-release copies of Quest 23. So you can get editing with those immediately. Uh, start sharing your images in the Archipelago Collective. Uh, you can show off that you've got them early before everyone else. And for those that haven't got it, uh, you'll be able to get your hands on it on the 1st of February uh, if you are a Quest member. So go and check that out, archipelagoquest.com. Uh, get subscribed if you're not already. Uh, and we will... Uh, We'll be releasing this on the 1st, so not too long to wait. But yeah, congratulations to those who just won the pre-release copy. Do reach out to us at the email address that you see in the chat there, and we'll get that sorted out for you. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we've got lots of great content on the YouTube channel, so do make sure to go and check all of that out. And come and join me again for another live stream in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, thank you once again for joining, and I'll see you soon.